All right, you crazy people, welcome back. Uh, a lot of my students ask me, when should I use asynchronous programming? And they have learned how to use asynchronous programming, but they don't know when to use asynchronous programming. And one of the most common patterns that can help you recognize when to use asynchronous programming is fire and forget pattern. The fire and forget pattern allows you to execute a task asynchronously without waiting for its result. This means that you can start the task and immediately continue with other work without blocking or waiting for the task to complete. In more simple terms, when you have a task that needs to be executed in the background but the result of that task isn't needed immediately, that is known as a fire and forget design pattern. And it's one of the most common scenarios to use asynchronous programming in. For example, let's say you want to send an email or log a message. They both are tasks that don't require an immediate response and can be executed asynchronously in the background using the fire and forget pattern. So let's actually see an example of sending emails asynchronously. First of all, we are just going to import our async IO library and uh, we are going to then import our SMTP library and we can use other libraries to send emails. But for this example, I'm just going to use our SMTP library and uh, then we're just going to create our coroutine and we can call this coroutine send emails you can call it whatever you want and it's going to require some parameters let's just give it a subject uh, in an email we have a subject we have a body uh, the body of our email and who do you want to send the email to and now there are a lot of ways to send an email using send grid or paleo or you can just use gmail and we are going to use that example in our code uh, but for right now, let's just try it pass and create other parts of our code. Then to execute this coroutine, we're also going to create another coroutine and we're just going to call that coroutine main. And inside this main coroutine, we are going to create a task to send that email. And this is actually the fire and forget task. So we are just going to use our async IO library and we are going to just create a simple task that's going to execute in the background. And we are going to use our uh, send email coroutine and we can just give some values over here for our send email coroutine. So I'll just input those values and then we can just continue with our other work, whatever we want to code in, we can just write that down. So I'm just going to add a comment over here so that you guys remember and then we can just print out, uh, let's say doing, doing other tasks while the email is being sent in the background. And then how do we execute our coroutine of main? We simply use the async io.run method. So we are just going to write async io.run. This is going to create an event loop for us in our background. We want to run our coroutine called main. Now there are a lot of ways to send an email. You don't have to use the way I am doing it. I'm just going to use the way of Gmail that you can use Gmail to send an email. Uh, there are a lot of better ways to do it. I personally, in my good projects, use SendGrid to send emails. And we are going to actually see an example of using SendGrid to send emails asynchronously that they have actually given us. But yeah, this is our uh, very simple way to send an email. And what we can do is, I'm just going to go through this code a little bit so that people who are not familiar of what we are doing. So SMTP is basically a library that is used to send emails. And we have a content. This is basically sent in the header of an email. You don't need to worry too much about it, but basically Gmail needs it uh, whenever you're sending emails and we're sending emails through Gmail. So we need to give it a port number. We need to use this SMTP.SMTP. This is basically an object, uh, a function that is used to send emails and Gmail basically requires it. We are basically telling SMTP library that, hey, we want to send an email, get ready for it. Then we have our sender email who we want to send it to. This is our email. And then we need the email credentials of ourselves. So my email and my password would be right here, but obviously I'm not going to enter that. And this is the header. You don't need to worry too much about it. Gmail just needs it. And this is the same thing over here. And then we are going to use a send mail function to send an email. And then we are finally going to close it. You can use this if you want to, but I'm sure if you scan the internet, you'll find better ways to send an email. And if you want to use it, make sure that you go to myaccount.google.com and turn the less secure apps and turn it on if you want to test this out. And now let's just run this program and see what it gives us. So if we run this program, you can see that we are doing other tasks. And when this task is completed, then we get a task object here that we have sent our email. Obviously, we haven't put in the correct username and password, so it's not going to work. As you can see, we got our task object over here. So that means our task has been sent. 
and you can see that the task has been finished too. Now let's actually see the official code of SendGrid that they have on their GitHub and you can see how similar it is to our code. So I'm just gonna paste this over here and this is the asynchronous mail send by SendGrid which I use to send emails and I'm just gonna go through this code a little bit. They have imported their API client, then we have imported the async IO library, this is the SendGrid API key and who they want to send the email to. This is our email, this is the body content uh, what you want to send their email. This is just some of their objects that they are creating, helper objects. We don't need to worry too much about that. And this is just the core routine that they have created. You can see that there is this async keyword written in front of it. This is just uh, gonna be used and send many emails. Let's say we want to send multiple emails in the background and we are just gonna use this uh, send email function inside our send many function. Um, and then inside that they have also used this async io dot async and you don't need to worry about this async is basically create task and you can see that they are doing basically the same thing in our code if you go back to it we have also done the same thing we have a send email over here just like they have in their code over here send many emails and they are also using the create task functionality even though they have written async over here is basically the same thing we are also creating a task or sending an email and then to run all of this what they have done is that they have created a, their own event loop we have talked about this in the async event loop video that we can also create our own loop but for our case we don't really need to create our own loop all of this all of these three lines are done by our async io dot run functionality so we don't need to create our own loop from scratch they are basically doing the same thing they are creating a loop of their own and then they are in the, inside their task they are basically sending an email and basically this is also done by async io dot run functionality so you can see like most of the asynchronous email programs are kind of the same thing so this is pretty much it for sending emails and uh, yeah so this is pretty much it for this video too and i'll see you in the next one